Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, I'm going to make take a couple of roughed out bowls here. Uh, they are pear, uh, Manchurian pear, and uh, I'm going to make a box out of them. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen, um, but if you've got masses of roughed out bowls, this is one thing you could possibly do with them. So first I have to decide which is which. I mean, my main thing is here, I'm either going to have a, a high lid on a flat bowl, um, but I think I'm going for a kind of slightly taller shape uh, with a flat lid. And the first thing to do is to make sure, is to see how much wood I've got available. Now I've put a recess on the inside here so I can put it over expanding jaws. Um, but it's probably easier just to go straight into here first and I'll true up the inside first and just in there. I don't need all this rest so I get a shorter rest. And first thing to do is to just true up the little flange I've got on the inside when I can find the square end scraper. There it is. So it's square end scraper, very slightly skewed. And all I want is a nice clean little shoulder in there into which I can expand the jaws. And I'll just do the other one as well. It takes longer to get the thing in the chuck than it does to do the turning. Ah, it turns round. These jaws expand into that little shoulder. And I true up the blank and then I can work out more what I'm likely to be able to do with that. Now, use as usual a uh, half inch spindle gouge to just true these things up. It's hardly moved in the drying out, so a little shoulder there. Just using the nose of the tool just to the left of the nose. Squeeze the right wing in onto the edge. Same there. Just get my glasses on, which I should have done before, so I can see as much as anything. Different lenses in the uh, in the safety glasses, so that will do me for there. So that's just skimmed up, so it's right and true. I kind of hang the top of the uh, hang the bowl on on one of the arms and then just tighten it. And it doesn't need to be terribly tight, just tight enough to grip it. Throw up that, throw up the bottom, using the left wing. Quite why that's getting over, but it hardly needs hardly needs anything off to get it running through, which means nice stable stuff for the box. So we've got the potential base and the top. So the aim is going to be have quite a, quite a have an overhang with the lid, um, which will probably be in fitting. We'll just see how that goes in a second. So this bowl, I want to get a bit more shape to it and probably uh, widen the base a little bit. So we'll get that on. I need to know where the inside is, which is about there. And when you mark things like the inside, always put it exactly where it is. Then you're working in relation to that. 
you make allowances for things then you tend to uh, get out of kilter a bit. Now that is not really going to be where I want to be for a, um, a foot. I think it'll be a bit small but I'll shape some of the top first and just see how we're going for, um, for shaping. I'm going to reduce the diameter. I've got the top up here I didn't screw up before which I should have done. So what I'm hoping to end up with is well, what'll be a nice little bowl if the lid gets lost. So I'm take a bit of that off. Now there's still a half inch spindle gouge. Now that just doesn't want to cut. And I've clearly dinged it somewhere so it's if it doesn't cut, it needs sharpening. So I've got another gouge here somewhere. There's uh, another half inch spindle gouge. And here I'm most of the energy is in, into pushing the tool down onto the rest. Well I'm got a different tra trajectory there altogether. Didn't really want to go quite that deep. So um, let me just have a look at the side and you can watch how this shape develops. on its side at the end of that cut. Now I got the direction wrong there but I can probably still keep that mass which would be nice to keep just for the general strength of the piece. Now coming around the bottom um, this is beginning to look a bit not quite what I want. Okay so to get rid of this I just need this curve to come in round a bit more. Uh, I'm going to use a the shear scraper flat um, so the rest needs to come down so the angle between the surface I'm cutting the top of the tool isn't is pretty much 90 degrees. Let's ease it in. Now that's beginning to look where the bottom of the bowl will be so it will just live with that. That looks quite good at the moment and that means I'm going to have to take the whole of the bottom off a bit later. Now coming around the top I'll just use the shear scraper again and just keep this as a fairly solid mass. Just squeeze the tool in. I don't have as much control there as I do if I'm using a small skew chisel. So I can use the skew on its side and I'm just going to use the bevel side. Just drop the handle and rotate the tool and you get those nice little wispy shavings coming off. And then I'm going to cut a little groove just in the corner. Just defines the corner a bit better. Right, that's going to be fine. That's going to be what I grip. And it's very close to the... Um, oh no, it's not that close. No, the foot's a bit larger. So I'm going to have to take away most of that later. So I'll take away a fair amount now. That's not that sharp either. Try the 3 eighths. Quite sure why I'm doing that. I don't need to. Um, what I do need is just a little bullseye in the middle. So I float the pencil in and just leave a teeny white spot in the middle uh, for when I come to rechuck it. It might be useful. So 
this is now going to get sanded. Um, so I'll wait until I turn it round before I sand it. I think I can get it all of that in one go, so uh, that'll be fine. So that's the outside done, and now we'll have a look at lids. Oh, no, I won't. I'll do the inside first. We'll just see how we're going here. Yep, we're going to be we're going in the right direction. No, it doesn't want to go in straight. <coughs> <coughs> now that is a problem because I didn't cut the foot as much as I thought. So I'm now going to have to go up onto what I thought was a nice finished foot, which won't be. So we'll but it'll get turned again anyway, so that means the nice foot I've made is going to have marks on it. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Now this is looking terribly thin, to make it more exciting for you. 3-8 spindle, 3-8 uh, deep fluted bowl gouge. Oh dear, dear, dear that is thin. So my thumb easing it in. Doesn't feel quite so thin down there, but it certainly is just at the top of that that wall. a bit of weight in the base here because it's basically a, a box it needs some stability need a, uh, a round nose or a, uh, a bowl scraper this one and some light We're just trying to continue that wall round into the base. round circular motion in the middle so where the center is just in there in the middle of that you come up from underneath and then go off to the left I need to drop the handle very much to bring the um, uh, bring the edge up into the wood quite a bit. Right, I can sand all that. Try the uh, 180 grit first. That's all right. Um, this rim needs to be the flat or slightly tilted inward so the lid fits all right. So I'm just going to tilt it in a bit. The nose of the 3/8 deep fluted bowl gouge. Just kind of easing it in. I'll 
get at some of the back while I while I can. It's going to have to be rechucked to uh, finish off the base. The blue, which is the 240 grit. on the burnish mark there, so I'll go in reverse. She might go back a grit too, I think. Back to the yellow. I'll do some orange, which is the uh, 360. a very nice hard wood so I um, don't think I'll need much more than uh, the oil soaked sock uh, there's a little bit of oil in it fair amount of beeswax and that will probably do the job yep very nice Right, so we have that, and we have that, um, going in the right direction. So next bit, um, could finish this off now, but I'll, I'll do that a bit later, just in case I have to do more. So um, the next thing is going to be to grip this on the inside, uh, so I can get at the inside. So all I need on the lid is just a little bit of something to stop it sliding around. So I really don't like having beads on the outside unless I've got a fair amount of wood uh, to cope with it. Um, I'll flatten off and see what I've got to play with. So it's three bowl gouge again. And normally with this kind of bowl lid I'm going to have uh, a little tenon which fits into the base. <coughs> so I'll measure the diameter of the, of the base, of the inside. Yeah, I think I'm going to try the, I'm going to try having just a little A little bead instead, which goes over the whole bowl. Ah, so that's the outside of the bowl. Ah, so that's not so bad. So I'm just going to make make that a little bit wider, and do that with the uh, no, use a square end scraper. Mm. 
Now this is a cross grain box so even though it's pretty stable the pit is running up here you can still just about see it this is going to move in and out with this with changes in humidity so uh, I need to accommodate that so you don't want uh, you don't want too tight a fit that will that can be a bit looser than that And that'll be enough that just fits over the edge I've got enough to play with on the outside now with these kinds of lids um, I like to have some kind of decoration on the inside which I can expand the jaws into Well, it looks as though the original recess I did is going to be the um, the fixing point. The idea is to try and have a fixing point which looks decorative, but whose purpose is actually to uh, enable you to get it onto the chuck. Just a little kind of recess there. Let's bring the rest up a bit. This is the uh, shear scraper, just going to be used flat, curve will just about let me get in there. And I'm going to ease the corner in so that I can I've got somewhere for the jaws to expand into. And to cut that with the skew on its side. So it doesn't look like much, but that'll be enough to stop the jaws going out. I might make it a little deeper. Right, it's still only probably a millimetre and a half. So it's not very much. And we'll sand the inside. I don't know what it is. Some kind of picked up grain, so I'm just going to shear scrape that with the, the shear scraper. Let's check that that looks all right. that in a bit more. I'd really like to have this hanging over the um, over the base a bit more so that whole shoulder is going down and in order to cut the the side of that I'm going to use the side of the, uh, the skew. Make sure it fits. Yeah, so that's just a wee bit tight now. Huh? 
And the whole idea of this was so I can chamfer this rim. Yep, that's about right. If I want it any tighter, I can actually do that. I can come down a wee bit more. So this is tapered very slightly. And I can see a little extra rim in there, which you won't be able to, but at least maybe you can, but that just the skew point will get rid of that. It'll still be all right. So I know, yes, I know where I'm going with that, so I can finish the inside altogether now. So I did a bit of, I was on the 180 grit. find a coarse bit of the abrasive. in this time. Just in case there's um, not enough wax in the rag. Now I can feel something grabbing the cloth in there so there must be a little there's a teeny knot just there but that's not a problem. Here's a problem is getting right into the corner. Oh, let's squash the rag in there all right, good. So we'll see how that looks on the base. So still has potential. Um, I couldn't even make that foot a bit longer. Um, but really I'm just going to uh, have a look here and reduce the diameter of this a bit. Now I've got to remember I can't reduce it too much because I've got the overhang. Um, so I can probably, this is not the way I normally make boxes, so I've got to be very careful. Um, and I'm going to have a kind of uh, a, a lid which comes out, so I need to know where the inside is. So this is now going to expand into this little groove. Right, that's where the inside is. So I don't want it to go any lower than that. And I can take a little bit off the outside. So I might do that first. 3-8 spindle guards, so there's nothing too aggressive. Just ease the tool along the rest. The 
so the top Shade worried by the sound of that. That uh, sounds a bit thin. Yes, it doesn't. Oh, so I won't be able to do my shape like that. It's going to be um, a bit different. I haven't got the thickness there. So that's where it's thinnish. Don't want to change that very much. Come down in here and then out. And the whole idea of this is to have the edge kind of flowing out. We'll just see how that looks. So I've moved that up, um, again this is not something I would normally do with an overfitting lid so I've got other little problems coming up which I'm not used to. Uh, I normally have a little angle in there and I think I need an angle in here, it just doesn't look quite right to me. So I'm going to have, an, have it which lines up with the bead. We'll try that first. Another scruffy line. Three at spindle gauge. And then I can use the wing of that just to shear straight a little cove. I'll clean that up because I think it probably won't look too bad. So the shear scraper again on its side, really just a skewed scraper. And that's much easier than trying to do it with a square end. I could do it, but I've just got to move so fast, swing the handle round. Just think in terms of stroking the surface. Take this off and have a little look We're up there again. So I've almost got, not really quite an egg shape, but I've almost got the shape flowing through the um, through the bead, through the overhang. So if I can get away with that, yes, I think I've just got to bring this in a little bit tighter and that won't look too bad. And yeah. So I'm going to take that in a little bit. I'm going to use the skew as a like a negative rake scraper, really. I'm going to hone what will be the underside. So there's a little burr on top. Now I normally have a little skew chisel which I can grind 
uh, in all kinds of different ways uh, for just for this kind of job. It's not this skew, I don't know where the other one is at the moment, but that was that. Was that. Now this is going to be used as a, as a uh, for a shear scrape, so I'm going to hone that wing. So that, that whole curve is going to be squirting into the edge. Going to kind of get some lift to the under underside of that eave too. Right, that's going to be okay. And now I've come round and deal with the knob. That's going a little bit too hard when I get that vibration. Now this is going to need, this needs sharp and it wasn't quite crisp enough a cut. So I'm going to the grinder while Dave moves the camera. There's a little bit of picked up grain up there, but basically I'm going to be cutting down the handle. Oh, a little catch. And have the tool right on its side. I get in there as I come out. I can just use the the full curve on the on the left wing. Just roll it over on its side to shear scrape that surface, nice and clean. Uh, and then I usually put a little button, inset button in on the top, and sort of move the rest away a bit so that when I'm pivoting it, I, I get a bigger circle as the edge moves around. Right on its side, so I get underneath the button a bit. Oh, there's a bit missing there. That must have been that little catch I had, so I was going to put a chamfer on the edge anyway. So. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, this is all a bit kind of wider than I really want, but on the other hand, if I take it down, I've got a very, very narrow rim, or very narrow bead, but I think I'll risk it. Cutting from this direction, I can see how much wood I've got left. Just stroking the surface. Now that's very slightly out of whack, but it's not enough uh, to really worry the look of the whole thing. Um, now that isn't quite the curve I might have hoped. So that's all going to get trued up now. A bit of a kind of lump just there. Yep, don't have to touch the top, that's good. Right, in with 180 grit again. Let's get a new piece. 
stage I'm thinking ah almost done but of course I've still got to do the base uh, which is um, going to present a little bit of a chucking problem I suspect although not that unusual just forcing the wax into the gap all the dust collects on the inside. Right, so that's not looking too bad at the moment. And the main decision really now is, uh, where are we, put it here. So I can take the, um, take the foot back into a bit of an OG. I can take the bottom off and keep the little bead at the bottom. I'm just wondering about taking the bottom off altogether, but the problem is that the curve is beginning to go tight in that way. Um, so I don't think that's really an option. I think probably the straight foot is going to be the way to go. Now, this has to, it's an open bowl, so it's either got to go into a hole, jam it in, um, or it goes over a dome and I'll go for that option uh, between centres. Cut there. Ah, lots of good info on this one. So I need a slightly bigger I've got. That's no 
a slightly bigger bit of something. Right, so, um, yes, we can start recording again. Um, yeah, that'll probably be quite, that'll probably be quite good, yes. Yep. Okay, ready? Yep. So what comes to hand is uh, this stub of green ash, which I hope is going to fit into the chuck. Yep. And in fact, what I'll do first is um, I want to use this end because it's slightly bigger. Oh no, I don't. No, I'll just do it this way. This can just stay in the chuck, and uh, I'm going to just round the end off so that that will fit over there. So the um, half inch spindle gouge. It'll fit all right, and what I need is a bit of non slip, which I have bits of. Now, this has got a hole cut out of the middle so that it just goes, fits round a little bit better. I've got the white dot in the middle. And it might be in the middle, but it's not central now. Oops, oh no, the whole thing slid off. Got a better way of doing it than that. Um, and now I've got that little mark down in the middle. Uh, but if I use this little bit of MDF, That can go in. That'll allow me to shift the uh, shift the whole thing. And get it pulling it in. Just get it running as true as possible. Tighten. Right, so half inch uh, or three eighth spindle gouge. Do I want the bead? No, I don't think I do. And to go for a cylinder. Oh, that's how we feel in the middle of the afternoon. Now, there are slight bruise marks there and uh, they're discoloured from the chuck. And to get in onto the bottom, there's the uh, Skewed scraper again. And then I've got a slight kind of flared base. Don't really want to take it off to have a look. I think I decided on the cylinder, cylinder so go for the cylinder. And I very stupidly did not sand the um, sand the base originally. So what I'm going to have to do now is just turn down a lot of that MDF. 
so that I can sand a bit more of the bottom. Now as I get in there, the, the bottom is dished, the MDF is flat, so if I cut it off, it's going to be grooving on a smaller diameter. No, it's I think it'll, I'll just have to live with that. And sand it and be grateful. So in this situation I've really got to melt the wax in. I could put I could put some more oil on but there's probably some on the wax. And I want to get at the center of the uh, of the base, which if I thought far enough ahead I would have sanded already. It is at least it's concave, so I don't have to deal with that. Now this is going to be the exciting bit uh, because I've got to take the tailstock away and sand the base. This is the, the macho approach to doing these things. Oops. Oh no, maybe. If I take my finger away it's going to come off. You can see it coming loose. So that will do the job. That will be enough. Oh. Might try another version of that and see how it looks. So I think the, the lid definitely at the moment to me looks a bit heavy, maybe too much knob. I've got a little bit to play with there. Does it really need a knob at all? No. Shall we see what it looks like without a knob? Yes. There would be an alternative to this. I could just um, make another one which is similar um, and uh, then adapt this later. But we'll just, since it's an educational video or an entertainment video, we'll 
we'll just try taking the knob off and see how it looks but it doesn't look very nice and that's that's a lesson learnt <laughs> so 3 8 spindle guard take most of it off Change of cultures on this lid suddenly. Well, it's a totally different character, that's for sure. <laughs> What do we reckon, Dave? <laughs> Better? <laughs> Dave gives the thumbs up. I'm just, I would still like to flatten it a bit in there. Oh, yes, got the wood. So I'll do this with the, uh, the scraper. Just come up in there. It's much more of a dome. It just needs to come in a bit if I can. Yep, we've <coughs> got the wood. Now, ideally, I would come in from this side, but rather than do that and move the camera, I'll just come around from here. needs to come in. And you can see that with a project like this you can take the lid off on and off any number of times and uh, see how it goes. I think it's beginning to look better myself. Move that up.
rather odd noises up there. I have an idea I might have gone through the rim. Yes, I have. So much for pushing that design. I don't think I can escape this. No, I can't. I haven't got enough to put an inside bit on. Um, no, but fortunately I've probably got another bit of wood. So there we are, but it's always worth pushing the bounds. I think that was going to look quite good. But my problem was basically stemmed from oops, having this having the overfitting lid which is something I don't normally do. Still I've still got a nice little bowl. <laughs>